meshed beautifully. Sometimes he'll come down and shut this off because it feeds back so bad. So if you'd like me to, I will. Hello. Test one, two. Test one, two. Hello. Hello. Ooh, it's tinny. Hello. One, two. One, two. I can't hear it. There it is. Hello. Okay. So we're good? Hey. Hello. One, two. Hello.
Good morning. morning. Oh, I can hear that. (laughs) My name is Pastor Bob Long. I'm the guest pastor this morning. And I did not expect to see your pastor here with us, but I'm happy to have him here with us. Actually, I could give him this and sit (laughs) sit where he is. What a beautiful wedding yesterday. What a precious way to start. And what a support from this congregation. It was a joy to be here. Happy Father's Day to all of you who are fathers biologically or any of you and every one of you who have the capacity and the privilege of being fatherly love to anyone. Happy Father's Day. The theme for the day. In his book, Letters to a Young Doubter, William Sloan Coffin shares this. It is with an unbounded, unfathomable love that God loves every last human being upon the face of this earth, from the Pope to the loneliest wino. And God's love doesn't seek value. God's love gives value. It is not because we are valued that we are loved. It is because we are loved that we are valued. Our value is a gift, not an achievement. Just think, you never have to prove yourselves. That's already taken care of. All we have to do is express who we are and offer our love back to God as gift. Messiah Lutheran Church is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America that is rostered in the reconciling works and continually seeks to become a more welcoming, affirming, and celebrating congregation to people of all ages, races, ethnicities, nationalities, sexual orientations, gender diversities and identities, gender expressions, relational statuses, social economic statuses, disabilities, and mental and physical conditions. I'm glad of that because that can include me. We believe that these things make the church beautiful, diverse, and reflective of God, and therefore we can affirm the beauty the value and the gifts of each and every person. We honor and acknowledge the Haudenosaunee, that is the Iroquois people, and the Algonquin nations, upon whose ancestral homelands we ourselves gather for worship today, and as well as our indigenous siblings who continue to care for this land and call it their home. Please rise in body and or in spirit for the confession and the forgiveness. <coughs> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As I call as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare that you declare you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us for everything that is evil through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. to invite children to come forward and meet me at this time. You can be any age to be a child. Let's see. We're supposed to sit down here for the yeah, camera. Uh, the camera That's right. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. And you can help me get up later. So what have I got? A padlock. A padlock. 
How do I get it open? Use a key. Huh. I got a bunch of keys here. Let's try one. Who wants to try the first one? It's easy. You just put the key in and you turn it. You think you need a different key. That's not the right key. That's correct. That's correct. That's because this key is labeled, I always win. Ah, now what happens if I always win? Everybody else always loses. Ah, another key? Try that one. Ought to be easy, but but everybody says that that should work. Just try this and it will work. It's not opening. That's a good observation. It's not opening. This is the key of I'm better than you are. I'm better than you are. If I'm better than you are, what does that mean about everybody else? They're worse than me. Oh, wow. Where have we heard that before? Try that one. One of those should fit. I gave you two this time. <laughs> don't fit they don't fit at all? No. That's right. This is the key that is labeled, get everything as fast as you can. Get everything as fast as you can. What happens when we get everything as fast as we can? Nobody else gets things, do they? You're absolutely right. Now, this could go on forever, but I'm going to give you <laughs> this key. Oh, 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 in the scriptures, we understand that Jesus is the key of life. It won't come out, huh? No. <laughs> it's okay, you got it open. Jesus is the key of life because he gives us the way to be generous and inclusive, to care about others, and to treat everybody with dignity. That is to treat them as important as anybody else. So that's why that key works. Now, if we do this in life, we will understand that something of God's own presence is in every person that is alive. I want you this week to think, remember, to think about how God is present in each person you meet. Would you do that? And I bet you will see a little different understanding of God, a little different picture of God, a little different portrait of God in every person you meet. And that is what William Sloan Coffin meant when he said, we are loved, and because we are loved, we have value. Let us pray. And I'm going to say a phrase, and you're going to say it after me. And that makes it our prayer, not just mine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your love. For your love. Which cares for me. Which cares for me. So that I can care for others. So that I can care for others. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your love. For your love. That comes through others. That comes through others. As you care for me through them. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I need a <laughs> Thank you.
a reading from Isaiah. <laughs> I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. That's true in more ways than one. Hear the gospel for the morning. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes and he had, did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon out into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside was a large herd of swine feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then Jesus came out to see what had happened. Then people came out to see what had happened. <coughs> and when they came to Jesus, they found the man for whom the s demons had gone out at his feet, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. 
So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm not going to use that scripture as the basis for my sermon today. However, I'm going to al allow it to become part of the, the background of which God's grace exists. I want to use a scripture from the Gospel of John. 21st ver chapter, verses 15 to 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. And again, Jesus said, Simon, Don, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Then the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, you were younger and you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Let us pray. Eternal one of compassion, mercy, and love, be with us now through these words which have been spoken, that they may be taken inwardly in spirit, mind, and heart, and lived outwardly so that others may see in our actions the presence of your love in this world and seek you, the source. In Jesus' name, amen. Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than these? Three times Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Three times Jesus says to Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, tend my flocks, take care of my lambs. What is Jesus getting at when he says, do you love me? What does Jesus mean when he says, feed my sheep? Tend my lambs. This morning I want to interpret this gospel lesson which I have just read last using another encounter of Jesus. Which In the parable of the Christian origin, a certain religious scholar was committed to upholding a rigid system of beliefs that gave privilege to a few at the expense of most. This system was a marriage of theology, nationalism, patriotism, politics, economic access, and social stratus. We're not aware of anything remotely like that today, are we? Now this religious teacher who engages Jesus has become aware that Jesus is offering a way of life intentionally seeking to release people to discover and fulfill the God goodness that is already within them. There are no prerequisites. This leader is clearly aware also that Jesus is intentionally moving beyond the controlling boundaries imposed by this theological, patriotic, economic, social, and political marriage of power. Still, there seems to be a strange, strange dichotomy within this religious leader. On the one hand, he seeks to publicly humiliate Jesus and to diminish what Jesus asks as his way of life so that Jesus will ask finally what this man is willing to give. 
He likes his privilege, even if on this uneven playing field, many suffer as a result. On the other hand, he seems to be genuinely asking, searching. So his question is actually a combination of trickery and a genuine search for something he knows and senses is missing within him. Have you ever found yourself as I found myself? bringing such varied ideas and, and values together as I seek to engage Jesus? The religious leader asked Jesus, what do I have to do to have eternal life? Listen again now. This man is asking about eternal life. He did not ask, what do I have to do to have pleasure, to have success, to be acceptable, to be admired and looked up to. He did not ask, what do I have to do to be wealthy or to acquire power? It seems he has tried all of these and they have come up short. And he is not willing to understand that what he is searching for will only come after death. Now Jesus, the exceptional teacher that he, that he is, surprises this man and responds with questions of his own. What do you find in the scriptures, in the law? How do you understand it? How do you interpret it? The man answers correctly. You are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your body. And you are loved to love your neighbors as you love yourselves. The clear point is, we correctly love God as we seek the well-being of others in the same manner and in the same degree that we seek our own well-being before God. Indeed, the deepest emphasis of the Hebrew and the Christian and Islamic faiths acknowledges that God redirects our love for God to be expressed in love for all of God's creation and creatures without exception. This is eternal life. This is salvation. Now this man who is engaging Jesus is beginning to catch on. He's becoming very uncomfortable with what he's hearing. <laughs> eternal life will require change that he is not willing to make. So he digs in his heels and he puffins his heart and he uses all of his mind to look for a loophole. Now you and I have never looked for a loophole to try to soften Jesus' love requirements in our life, have we? The man asked Jesus, Jesus, just how do I define neighbor? And you can almost hear him say softly within himself, gotcha now, Jesus. Now, we don't often think of Jesus as being mischievous, do we? But Jesus knows how to have a little fun, especially in significant times. It is just at this point in the encounter of Jesus with this man who comes to him the scripture takes a humorous term. Jesus responds with the parable of the Samaritan. The parable ought to be t told again and again so many times in our families that everyone from older to younger knows it hard and takes it with them into every relationship of every day. The man asked, and who would you say is my neighbor? <coughs> But Jesus isn't interested in the object, the neighbor. Jesus remains focused on the subject, the questioning man himself. Jesus won't let this questioner sidetrack him. Including, concluding this story, Jesus asked this man, as he asks you and me today, what do you think? Which of these three became a neighbor to the man who was beaten? Now, that's a different kind of question, isn't it? The man had asked, who is my neighbor? 
And Jesus responds with a different re question. Jesus says to this man testing him, nice try, nice try. You ask your second question in order to get around the answer to the first question I, got, I gave you. And I know it. I shall respond then not to the second question, but to your first essential question, which you were trying to avoid. Now, in this parable of the Samaritan, Jesus is not talking about life after death. Neither is he talking about endless life. In this parable, Jesus equates salvation with acting as a neighbor, here and now, in this life, from Monday through Sunday. Eternal life, neighborly kindness, as Jesus clarifies it here, is a lifestyle, it is a way of being. It is a set of guiding values for every relationship with God and others. <laughs> Moreover, in this parable, Jesus gives us qualities of this way of being, of neighborly kindness. They include affirming human dignity, empathy, compassion, care, fair justice, mercy, acceptance, forgiveness, reconciliation, generosity, and community. These are to be integrated in everything that we are and do from morning to night, day after day after day after day. Jesus says to us, this is salvation, and these are its characteristics. And in fact, this is also exactly how we are to love God through Jesus. And this is also exactly how we are to feed his sheep, tend his lambs, shepherd his flock. I suspect until I act with my choices and my votes and my participation in striving for the well-being of others to the same degree and in the same manner that I strive for the well-being of myself before God, I am still looking for loopholes to avoid the essence of Jesus' love. And I will remain restless with the searching within me as is this man who came to Jesus. Now I believe that we cannot afford to miss Jesus' point. Important as it is, being regular in attendance at worship isn't what Jesus means by feeding his sheep. As helpful in instances as they may be, agreeing to certain religious statements, that is, correct dogma and right doctrine, isn't what Jesus means by tending his sheep. As significant as they are for us, rehearsing the dates and times of our religious conversions is not what Jesus means by the ingredients of saving love. As inspiring and renewing as can be the case, worshiping in varied forms with passion and enthusiasm and excitement isn't what Jesus means by loving God. As comforting as it may seem, Claiming to be the only true faith or the only true denomination isn't what Jesus means by transforming love. As meaningful as it can be, being compassionate only with those who are compassionate in, re in, in return isn't what Jesus means by drinking the cup that he drinks. In fact, all of these bound together fall short. Remember the priest, the highly educated, religiously correct celebrant of temple worship passes by on the other side. The Levite, this charismatic, popular, well-positioned lay leader crosses the road and moves on. Their exclusive religious beliefs and practices will not allow them to, to live with neighborly love. But hear the Spirit of God speak through Jesus' parable. This foreigner, this one hated by the two who passed by, this foreigner 
Note the verbs, the actions springing from his deep faith and love. This foreigner sees the battered man. He stops. He expresses compassion. He comes near. He bends down with his bare hands and cloth torn from his own clothes. He washes the wipes the way the blood from this battered man. He cleanses and bandages the wounds so that they can begin to heal immediately. He loads the man on his own donkey and he walks beside the donkey to the nearest inn. He personally carries him inside and watches with him through the night. And in the morning when he must leave, this foreigner who has integrity of faith and love puts his money where his compassion is and makes it possible for another to watch him until he's able to return. Here is the content which I believe we should measure everything that we claim to be of the Spirit of God. Everything that we ever claim to be Christian. But I believe that I hear in this parable where the early church remembers and passes on Jesus' ethical and moral teachings of God's grace that the same old, same old theological, religious, patriotic, political, economic, and social marriage of power is not at all what Jesus calls neighborly kindness or salvation. Which brings us to ask, what is the spiritual dynamic, the relationship, active in today's scripture? Jesus is standing at the door of our life. Do you love me more than these? Jesus is standing at the door of our life, seeking our conviction and commitment to his way. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs. Several painters have depicted the scene of Jesus standing at the door knocking, and almost every one of them depicts a door with no handle on the outside. In John's Gospel, Jesus is constantly standing at the door of our hearts and minds and spirits knocking, but the door can only be opened from within. Jesus is engaging us. Won't you open to the salvation that God offers through me? Inviting us, please allow me in more fully. Now in this age where data and information seem to supersede relationships, understand that Jesus is not simply trying to provide us with facts and data. Jesus stands at the door of who we are calling for a response, a living response. Jesus is calling us to invest ourselves in his nonviolent yet very assertive alternative which fulfills and saves not only ourselves but those in wider communities spreading out. Jesus is summoning, beckoning, calling, asking our passionate participation as his church, his living body in space and time. Surrender and learn from me whose and who you are. Learn to cooperate instead of compete. Learn to build up rather than tear down. Learn to be generous rather than gather only for self. Learn to be fair and equitable rather than greedy and prejudiced. Learn to include rather than exclude. Learn to unite rather than divide. Learn to enter sacrificial love, especially with those who suffer most. And learn to celebrate with redeeming acts the full human dignity of every person on the face of this earth. Do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep, tend my lambs.
What do you think? Which of these three became a neighbor to the man beaten by robbers? The one who treated him with kindness. Jesus is calling us to become ever more part and parcel with his saving relationships. With each new step that I take, with each new step that you take, we take a step away from a frantic, damaging existence. And we take a new step into a life-giving, saving joy. May it be true in us. Amen. Pour out your blessing on all fathers and those who provide fatherly care. You have made them in your image and given them children to love and care for in your name. Fill them with a heart like your heart, discerning and thoughtful, bold, decisive, compassionate, and loving, as they model, as they model for their children the life that is lived by faith and not by sight. Grant them courage under pressure and confidence in your power of love. When troubles threaten to overwhelm them, grant them your coping calm. When doubts give rise to anxiety, shore up their trust in your promises. When joy fills their days, grant them a keen gratitude for your abundant supply of grace. Season them with a lively sense of humor, Lord, for it will make life richer for us all. In all circumstances, preserve them as your own. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. You may be seated. As we pray, we pray for these two countries listed in the ecumenical prayer, Malawi and Zambia. We pray for God's presence and grace that flows within and through these people and is a gift to all nations. We are thankful for the biodiversity and natural wonders in these lands. We are thankful for the church leaders who have spoken out and countered sexual violence and human rights abuses. We are thankful for those who are dealing with challenges of migration within and to these countries. We are thankful for stable governance and ec economies and rising living conditions for many people in recent years. We pray for greater food security for those most vulnerable in every place upon the face of this earth, especially in times of climate change. We pray for an end of political and economic corruption we pray for rising standards of living, particularly with those who have least and less. We pray for an end of exploitation of resources and of people, especially those who are young and female. Sherry Lamb asked for prayers of healing for her mom and to give her strength to heal. Are there other prayers that you have in the congregation? Um, prayers for the loss of Tony Young, for his family and my brother. Uh, prayers for uh, got to be with Gloria, of course, and also just prayers of thanksgiving for how wonderful you all were uh, for me and my family yesterday. Thank you. One more. Oops, two more. Uh, I w want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day, and especially to my dad, Francesco, in heaven. Prayers for Pastor Dustin and Rachel as they embark on their new life together, that they enjoy much love and happiness and the grace of God. One more by the street, yes. Prayers of healing for Penny who has COVID. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace and knowing that in your presence you are already 
responding to these requests. We also offer ourselves that we might be the hands and feet and minds and heart of your response so that those for whom we have prayed know in our personal selves the living witness of your love. Amen. As we have lifted up prayers for our community and world, we are reminded called to go and bring the witness of God's love to the world. You witness and sing our song. What does the Lord require of you? Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace of Christ.
We know that some of you are joining Messiah for the first time, as actually am I. If you're worshiping with us virtually and would like to learn more about our ministries and activities, please contact us by email or by phone. If you'd like to make a, an on online gift using tithe.ly, or via the mail to a Messiah in support of our ministries, this is the time to do so. If you've brought your offering, please feel free to place it in the offering plate before you depart. For those participating virtually, we invite you to help us spread the good news of God's love for us by sharing this live stream and liking us on Facebook. For all of you, you do to support our mission to nourish others in our neighborhood, in body and mind and heart and spirit. We deeply thank you. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Understand that I'm going to read the rest of this. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should in all places, in all times, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Holy Spirit, uniting in our one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Blessed are you, God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise for you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. 
praise to you for your spirit poured out over all nations. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars. We praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forevermore. Amen. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together the way Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Deliver us through evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Which one do you want for it? Come, for the banquet is now ready.
that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve, in all, to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. down for the youth to do the benediction. Three of you will be the youth to do the benediction. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Oh. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And